As we continue to delve into the transformative truths of Romans 12, let us reflect on the significance of Paul's words, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The use of therefore means that what Paul is about to share is based on what he has already explained. Presenting our bodies as living sacrifices leads to a life that is not conformed to this world but transformed by the renewing of our minds. This renewal allows us to discern what is good, acceptable, and ultimately the perfect will of God for our lives. Paul urges us to think soberly, not more highly of ourselves than we ought, because God has given each of us the measure of faith. This measure aligns with our unique role in the many-membered body of Christ. Each of us holds a distinct office, equipped with grace and faith to fulfill that calling. It is not by our choice, but by God's sovereign plan. Offering our bodies as living sacrifices results in transformation. This is not limited to understanding God's Word but extends to living out His perfect will in our personal lives. Each member has a unique call, and offering ourselves leads to discovering that call and fulfilling it. When I sought understanding on how to offer my body as a living sacrifice, it was not a matter of willingness but of method. I wanted to know how to do it effectively. The key lies in understanding that self-mortification through extreme discipline alone leads nowhere. Simply denying the flesh without spiritual empowerment results in an endless cycle of striving that can descend into cynicism. True mortification of the flesh happens only through the Spirit. Romans 8 provides the key, if through the Spirit you do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Jude reinforces this by teaching that we can rise above the limitations of the flesh by praying in the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 26-27 further elaborates that the Spirit helps our weaknesses, interceding for us according to God's will. This divine intercession strengthens us, aligning our hearts with God's plan and enabling true transformation. By offering ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we allow Him to mortify the deeds of the flesh and infuse us with revelation knowledge. He works within us to supernaturally align our lives with God's purposes. This is genuine transformation and the pathway to living out the perfect will of God. Paul's assurance that God has delivered the measure of faith to each of us is profound. This measure contains enough faith to appropriate everything the cross has redeemed for us, healing, blessings, ministry, and our unique calling. Each of us possesses a part, and together, these measures form the complete, powerful body of Christ. Let us recognize that the measure of faith within us is sufficient for fulfilling our calling. To claim otherwise is to doubt God's provision. He has equipped us fully, enabling us to stand confidently in His promises and fulfill the ministry He has prepared for us. Embrace this truth, knowing that God's measure of faith in you is enough to accomplish all He has set before you. Let us understand a foundational truth. When we say we lack enough faith, we are, in essence, doubting the faithfulness of God. If you claim, I couldn't fulfill my calling because I didn't have enough resources, you are overlooking the fact that God has already provided you with the measure of faith necessary for your calling. If God instructed you to go, He provided for it, even if you did not perceive it. Each believer is given a measure of faith, deposited in their spirit at the moment of being born again. This seed is incorruptible, the very Word of God. Just as a corn seed produces a corn stalk and a wheat seed produces wheat, the seed planted in you contains the unique blueprint for your life and ministry. Your seed differs from mine, but each holds within it the potential for every branch, every harvest, and every aspect of your calling. Jesus said, If anyone believes in me, as the Scripture says, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water, John 7:38. This living water represents the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you are watering the seed within you, nurturing and cultivating it. Over time, this seed begins to germinate, sprouting into the fullness of God's plan for your life. As you persist in prayer, the growth becomes undeniable. Your direction, purpose, and calling become so evident that when asked how you know, you can confidently say, it's alive within me. Transformation occurs in two key phases. First, it involves the renewing of your mind. Paul instructs, be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12 2. Just as a transformer changes the voltage of electricity, the word enters us at one level and transforms us so that it can come out at another, more powerful level. This supernatural process aligns us with God's good, acceptable, and perfect will. Second, the Holy Spirit plants and reveals your specific call. As you offer your body as a living sacrifice and engage in prayer, 
especially praying in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit begins to mortify the deeds of the flesh and bring about this transformation. This process is described in Romans 8, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us, Romans 8 26. The Spirit knows the mind of God and aligns our prayers with His perfect will. When you commit time to praying in the Holy Spirit, even if it's only for five minutes, something profound begins to happen. The Holy Spirit starts to turn parts of your life over to God, enabling you to become more dead to the world and more alive in Him. The more you commit, the deeper the transformation. Consistent, dedicated prayer brings about lasting change and positions you to discover and walk in God's perfect will. Isaiah 28 9-12 provides further insight, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? those who are weaned from the milk. Strong meat belongs to those who, through practice, have trained their senses to discern good and evil. The mature believer is one who has moved beyond the basics and exercises their spiritual senses through the word and prayer. If we remain on spiritual milk, we remain unskilled. We may know the promises in theory, healing, prosperity, victory, but without skill, we cannot effectively apply them. By engaging in prayer and allowing the Spirit to guide us, we transition from spiritual infancy to maturity. This growth enables us to use the word skillfully and live in the fullness of our faith, appropriating all that the cross has redeemed for us. Commit to nurturing your seed, praying in the Spirit, and embracing the transformation that comes from offering yourself as a living sacrifice. In doing so, you will see God's perfect will unfold in your life, empowered by the faith He has already provided. Let us explore the depths of spiritual growth and the power of praying in the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah 28 9-12, the question is asked, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The answer lies in those who have matured beyond spiritual infancy, those who are weaned from milk and ready for solid food. This maturity comes as we align our hearts with the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul speaks of praying in tongues as a way to speak mysteries before God. Through this practice, the Holy Spirit leads us line upon line, precept upon precept, teaching us and transforming us. This process shifts us from spiritual milk to strong meat. It is through this offering of ourselves, praying in tongues and presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, that genuine transformation takes place. The result? We experience what the Scripture calls the rest and the refreshing. Are you weary? Do you seek rest for your soul? Understand this, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are actively offering yourself as a living sacrifice. This involves a process of spiritual death, dying to the things of the world, and coming alive to God. Transformation in Christ necessitates leaving behind worldly attachments. This line-upon-line line teaching and progression weans us from spiritual milk, enabling us to grow into maturity. And as we grow, we find rest and refreshing in the Spirit. When I was born again, I entered the kingdom of God with many burdens and struggles. My inner man was made new, but my outer man still carried remnants of my past. It was only through persistent prayer and the Holy Spirit that true purging began. Over time, the things that weighed me down were stripped away. It took years, but God eventually ushered me into a peace that I had not thought possible. This peace made me resilient, unshakable by the enemy's threats. It was this profound peace, brought about through the consistent practice of praying in the Spirit, that rendered me unmanageable by the devil. This is the rest that Isaiah speaks of. This is the refreshing that comes from communion with God through stammering lips and another tongue. Praying in the Holy Ghost over long periods purges the soul and aligns it with God's will. Jesus Himself said, If you bear fruit, I will purge you so that you bear more fruit, John 15 2. This purging comes through the living Word as it becomes active and alive within us. During the early days of my ministry, I would spend countless hours in prayer, sometimes in halls or even my car, and I found a deep peace as a result. This peace became so precious that I wanted others to experience it. When people would ask how I had such peace, I would tell them, pray in the Holy Ghost and immerse yourself in the Word. Some followed this path, and miracles happened. Yet, not all who started continued. Out of ten, perhaps three would persist, while the others would falter and seek different means of growth. This is a mystery, the commitment to praying in the Spirit separates those who reach spiritual maturity from those who do not. Praying in tongues isn't just an exercise, it's a lifeline. It brings rest, builds resilience, and purges the soul. 
those who commit find themselves walking in greater strength and clarity, rooted in the peace that passes all understanding. Let us, therefore, dedicate ourselves to this powerful practice and allow God to transform us from the inside out. Let us delve into the depths of spiritual growth and the profound power found in consistent prayer in the Holy Spirit. The Scripture tells us that strong meat belongs to those who have matured, those who are no longer on spiritual milk but are ready for deeper teaching. Isaiah 28 9-12 asks, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The answer is clear, those who have grown beyond infancy and are prepared to receive line upon line, precept upon precept. This maturity comes as we engage in the supernatural gift of praying in tongues, which leads us into deeper rest and spiritual refreshing. When we pray in tongues, we are speaking mysteries before the Father, and it is through these mysteries that transformation begins. This is not just a superficial change but a profound shift where the Holy Spirit takes us from milk to meat, from the basics of faith to deeper, richer understanding. This journey of growth results in a powerful rest, a rest that renews the weary soul. The Apostle Paul speaks of this process as offering our bodies as living sacrifices. When we do this, we are engaging in an act of surrender that invites the Holy Spirit to mortify the deeds of the flesh and align our minds with the will of God. As we persist in this practice, transformation becomes evident. Initially, I too struggled with burdens and old habits when I first came to Christ. My spirit was renewed, but my soul carried the weight of past influences. It was through dedicated, consistent prayer in the Holy Ghost that these layers were peeled away. This purging process took years, but it eventually brought me to a place of peace that I could not have imagined. This peace is so profound that it makes one resilient to the schemes of the enemy, unshakable and unwavering. This, my friends, is the rest that Isaiah speaks of. This is the refreshing that comes through the power of the Spirit, through stammering lips and another tongue. You may find that when you first start praying in the Spirit, it seems mundane or even challenging. I recall the early days of my prayer journey, hours spent praying where I found myself distracted or searching for something to engage my mind. Yet, I persisted, and over time, I began to sense an internal shift. The peace of God started to influence my mind, and my spirit found true rest. Jesus said, If you bear fruit, I will purge you so that you bear more fruit. John 15 2. This purging comes through the living Word, as it becomes active within us. Praying in the Holy Spirit facilitates this process, the Word of God comes alive, sparking a transformation that reshapes our inner being. In those early days, I shared this practice with others, hoping they would experience the same peace. Some embraced it wholeheartedly and saw miraculous changes, while others faltered, seeking different paths. This journey requires dedication, and it separates those who mature spiritually from those who remain stagnant. Those who commit to praying in the Spirit find that it strengthens them, providing clarity and resilience. This rest and refreshing are available to all who choose to pursue it. Let us dedicate ourselves to consistent, heartfelt prayer in the Spirit. This practice will bring about the true transformation and peace that God intends for each of us. Through it, we will grow from strength to strength and walk in the fullness of His rest. As we continue to explore the journey of deep, consistent prayer, let us reflect on the challenges that arise and the misunderstandings that can emerge. It's not uncommon to hear stories of those who embarked on a path of prayer and then claimed that their anointing weakened or that they became weird as a result. They might even caution others against praying too much, warning that it could lead to a loss of effectiveness. But let us look deeper at why this happens. When we truly offer ourselves as living sacrifices and engage in the foundational practice of prayer, especially praying in the Spirit, we invite the Holy Spirit to begin His transformative work within us. This transformation isn't limited to what we willingly surrender, it extends to those things we may be reluctant to release. The process of being conformed to Christ involves purging aspects of ourselves that we may not even realize are hindering our growth. In the parable of the sower, Mark 4, we learn that the seed, the Word of God, is sown on different types of ground, the wayside, stony ground, thorny ground, and good ground. The stones and thorns represent the hidden obstacles within us, the cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, and lusts for other things, that can choke the Word and prevent it from bearing fruit. These obstacles don't suddenly appear, they are present within us when the Word is sown. 
Praying in the Holy Spirit is essential because it illuminates these hidden areas, allowing God's light to reveal and purge them. This is where the true challenge lies, not everything that the Holy Spirit wants to remove is something we want to let go of. Yet, it is this very purging that leads to growth and maturity. The first stage of this spiritual purging deals with persecutions and afflictions. As we pray in tongues, we build ourselves up and become resilient to external pressures. The trials and afflictions of life, whether through difficult relationships, hardships, or opposition, no longer have the power to destabilize us. We become rooted, immovable, standing firm on the rock of Christ. The next stage is more subtle, overcoming the monotony and the cares of daily life. Many find that their initial zeal for God wanes as life's routine takes over. But through persistent prayer in the Spirit, we reignite that passion and ensure that the Word remains active and fruitful in our lives. The cares of this world, which once threatened to choke our calling, lose their grip as we continue in prayer. Beyond this, we face the deceitfulness of riches and the lust for other things. It's easy to think, I don't have to worry about riches, I don't have any. But the pursuit or longing for what we lack can be just as binding. God's provision is already contained within the measure of faith He has given each of us. If He has called you to a task, He has provided the resources for it. Praying in the Holy Spirit strengthens us and aligns our hearts with this truth. The reality is, as long as thorn seeds remain within us, they will attempt to rise up and choke the Word. But consistent prayer purges these seeds, allowing us to live free from their influence. When we stand before God, we cannot claim, I couldn't fulfill my call because I lacked resources or strength. God will remind us that within the measure He provided, everything we needed, including the faith and resources, was present. Commit to persistent prayer and let the Holy Spirit continue His work. Through this discipline, you will overcome challenges, grow in spiritual maturity, and walk confidently in the fullness of your calling. It's crucial to recognize the cost and commitment required to break through into God's perfect will and carry His transformative power. Many wonder why they should live a life capped with limitations when they could break through and make a profound difference. You don't have to live a life that leaves no mark, God desires to purge what holds you back and align you with His perfect plan. But this requires offering yourself as a living sacrifice, a process that the Holy Spirit alone orchestrates. I recall my own journey, a cycle of pressing into prayer, reaching significant breakthroughs, and then encountering seasons where distractions and pressures would pull me back. After years of commitment and breakthroughs, I experienced a new phase of ministry. Miracles began to manifest with such intensity that people would be overwhelmed by the power of God during services. Yet, even in the midst of such success, subtle pressures began to creep in, targeting weaknesses within me, fear, intimidation, insecurity. I sought validation from peers and external approval. This pressure grew insidiously, whispering lies that undermined my resolve. It suggested that it was okay to ease off prayer and lean on God's grace without the discipline that nurtures growth. I rationalized that God's power still flowed through me, so what harm could come from relaxing spiritually? But these subtle influences stemmed from thorn seeds that attached themselves to deep-rooted insecurities. Until those seeds were eradicated, they continued to drain my spiritual strength. Like many, I knew friends in ministry who succumbed to similar pressures, leading to a compromise of their callings. I saw it happen repeatedly, and I felt the same pull on my own life. A turning point came when I was ministering at a conference, witnessing how long-standing challenges remained. The realization struck hard, I could not continue under this pressure. When faced with the choice to either give in or press further into God, I chose the latter. I committed to fasting and praying with renewed intensity until those thorn seeds were finally uprooted. After intense seasons of seeking God, I experienced a breakthrough. Peace settled into my spirit, a peace that made me unmanageable by the enemy. It was then that I knew I had entered a deeper realm of spiritual authority. The enemy's aim is to keep believers stuck in complacency, tangled in minor conflicts and distractions. But God calls us to push past these barriers, crucify the flesh, and persist in prayer. There is a realm of revival, an extraordinary outpouring that God desires to release, a realm where the miraculous becomes the norm, where entire congregations witness divine healings, and where the most challenging cases are transformed by His power. 
the enemy fears this realm and works tirelessly to keep believers distracted and divided. He thrives when we operate at a superficial level, where we let petty conflicts and minor grievances keep us from fervent, united prayer. But, my friend, if you commit to relentless prayer, if you endure the process that confronts and crucifies the thorns and stones within, you will step into a place of divine power and peace. This peace, once settled in your heart, will serve as a testament to the revival that God can and will bring. Press on, push through the resistance, and align with His perfect will. Revival awaits those who refuse to settle for anything less than the fullness of His Spirit.